Hello, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I've got DeepSeek R1, that is the distilled local version, running on my Mac and is part of a broader workflow that utilizes its capabilities. So what I'm using for that workflow is NA10. What I'm going to show you is when you're using DeepSeek R1, and in this instance, I'm using the 7 billion parameter latest version from Olama. When you use it, what it does, it generates these think tokens. And so I'm going to show you how I strip out those think tokens and manipulate the text so it's suitable for another stage in the workflow. So another NAN node can actually pick up and run with that information that DeepSeek has generated and without the think tokens confusing matters. What I've got here is a very simple workflow. I've just got a text chat message. I've got a very simple AI agent here that's got Olama running on it and on within Olama there's the DeepSeek R1 is running locally in that instance. Within the um, AI agent I've configured it so it's got a system message that takes the input the keywords that I provided to generate a high quality image description and that's to feed a uh, an image generator so you know your use case may be different you may want to generate something different you may want to get it to generate um, a blog post or you may want it to get it to generate something else you may want to get to summarize a document and take that information and cut it down into a very small kind of chunk that highlights the themes. Whatever your use case, what this is, you know, how you go about giving it the NAN and deep seek the information to be able to go and do the right sort of task. So that's all that that's doing. And then moving over to the next stage in the process, this is where we are stripping out the think tokens. So let me just run this so you can see. Let's generate a man in a spacesuit on the beach. So it's going to take a few seconds to run the um, first stage. And you can see over here we've got my GPU history and my memory pressure starting to increase slightly. It's going to fail because I haven't got Comfy UI started at the moment. That's absolutely fine. But let's have a look at what we've got here so far. So we've got the input from the chat. That's what's happening there. That's taking my um, my initial prompt, and then it's outputting this content, which has these think tokens, which is its reasoning. This is what Deep Seeks all about these models have been trained to consider various options and I'll just see if we can find there we go there's the end that tag there that think tag there so more than half of the response is dedicated to think tokens the actual bit that we're interested in is this bit so what I'm going to do is now show you the code that strips that out. So that takes the output from the DeepSeek language model, including the think tokens. So what we've got here is we've got this remove tokens item that's in the JSON format that takes the input and then manipulates the input to remove the bits that are between the think token tags. This code came from Claude AI. I actually got it to generate some JavaScript and just input it into this code node that's part of NAN. But the first time it didn't work. So then I imported the all of this code and said, why is it working? And it spit out Claude spit out a, um, a different expression here and that then worked so I'm no coder like most of us we can hack our way through these things and get a good response 
if you kind of know what to ask the tools. So that's what the this code node is doing. And then I've also added in this text manipulation node. This is a community node that you can install from within the settings. So in community nodes. So I've got this NA10 nodes text manipulation node installed. Uh, and what that does is it allows you to pick text coming in from the previous node and then manipulate in some way shape or form and so what i've got here is i've got a replace action which is looking for anything where we've got the backslash n and i've cleared out so the value it's returning is nothing and same with the speech mark it's returning nothing so the reason why i'm doing that is i know from experience that the comfy ui api doesn't like these values in its prompt text so all i'm doing is i'm just stripping those out so that i get a reliable uh, prompt now if they don't appear in the source text then it just does nothing but it's good to have these fail safes in there so let's execute previous nodes let's go and turn on comfy ui and we can start running the whole process end to end so i just need to go into its folder and then python main.py okay so that's going to start up comfy ui i'm going to give the same prompt man in a space suit on the beach so hopefully come for you i will finish loading before the the prompt is sent to it there we go oh that's not bad timing so let's have a look at what this text manipulation has done so we can see over here where it's taken the output from deep sea car one and it's the previous task the code has generated this remove tokens item within the table and it's actually taken out the think token so now we just have the raw prompt information but it's got these four backslash n backslash n these new line informations so the final thing the data is just stripped those out so that's actually going to become our prompt text and then when we have a look in we won't be able to see it right now but when this node has com completed execution then we'll see that it's taken just the text that that i've um i fed it comfy ui if you want to know how to set up Comfy UI and run that locally on your Mac, then there's a video, um, the previous video I did is about that particular task um, and it will run you through how to get this up and running. At the moment I've got Hyperflux, the eight step version running on this so that, that generates a decent quality image with a relatively few amount of steps I've got this configured to do 16 steps so you can see the um, image generation is about three to four minutes if you want a higher quality output then the more steps the better certain models require 30 ish steps to get a well converged good quality image but yeah you know, I'm, I'm not so concerned about the overall quality whilst I'm testing things out but I want to see this doing a reasonable job the the flux model, the hyperflux model, is generating a 1280 by 720 dimensions image. And the reason why I'm doing that is because that's the pixel dimensions for a YouTube thumbnail. So, again, this is the kind of thing that you can start building into a broader workflow. And also, if you hadn't already spotted that you can follow my video around setting up Olama with NAN. Um, both of those those uh, tutorials will feature in the uh, description. So there'll be links in the description if you need to go off and see 
and follow those to get you to this point. The only other thing I want to really um, note whilst this is uh, executing is that you can use notes within an NA10 to help you understand what the various stages of the process are doing. So this note here has got my agent instructions that I use within the AI agent. So that, that text is the same. The reason why I do that is because I want to an at a glance view about what's going on. It is a manual step to be able to connect those two together. Well, that's certainly that's how I'm doing it at the moment. But it's well worth me having that because as these workflows get bigger and more complicated and as I'm connecting them together, I want to be able to see at a glance what things are doing and how they're configured to operate. So these notes here, this is my JavaScript code that I'm running. This in the uh, code node, the text manipulation, this is what that text manipulation is doing. So I don't need to go into the node to have a look and see what's going on. And then finally over here, there's some comfy UI notes. So we've got about 30 seconds left to complete on the comfy UI part of the process. I think if you wanted to, you could connect this into a broader content creator where this then feeds a, um, a WordPress node along with the generation of a blog post so you can actually draft a post. I think that's a particularly good or interesting use case. It's something I'm looking at doing in the future. But you've got loads of scope with, with this, you know, NAN's great, it will handle the binary file, it will pass it on to another stage, you can then do something with that. But at the moment it ends here because there's nowhere else for it to go. Right, so I'm going to open up the Comfy UI node and so we can see the text manipulation data, the data, that's what has formed the prompt this is the prompt the image depicts an astronaut like figure wearing a futuristic spacesuit and so this is what that's come out with so I can also have a look keep a folder of my comfy UI outputs so that's what the the process has generated this whole workflow is generated and yeah, it's done a pretty good job of it, I'd say. If I wanted higher definition, higher quality, better rendered, I would do more steps, but it would take longer. But for the purposes of this exercise, that's I'm happy with that. I'm happy with how that's come out. If you're into your AI, and especially running AI tools and processes on your own Mac locally, then have a look at this video over here.